Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cave of the Cross Projects. I'm Patrick. And I'm Tony. And uh, we're starting another book. What do you Yay. know? <laughs> so just, that means we finished one, right? We finished one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Greg Kokel's Tactics. And we got to do an interview with him, which was uh, very awesome. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, today Ooh. we're, we're um, starting our new book, Truth in a Culture of Doubt, Engaging Skeptical Challenges to the Bible yeah. by Andreas Kostenberger, Daryl Bach, and Josh Chetra. And uh, so what this book is going to do is kind of take the the, the best, uh, the critique of uh, biblical scholarship on the other side has to offer, and that's yeah. through Bart Ehrman. And right. so uh, we're kind of going to delve into who Bart Ehrman is, um, uh, you know, why he's become popular, and also uh, what his kind of main arguments are and seeing if, they're, if, if they have good standing, and if they do, we should admit when... Uh, uh, critics have uh, points and and uh, see that sometimes maybe uh, what they critique is actually beneficial for yeah, yeah. Uh, the Christian worldview. In fact, it helps us to grow as we in, engage, you know, with folks who don't necessarily agree with us. It challenges us and right. makes us think through the various issues and perhaps makes uh, make you know helps us to understand better what why we believe what we believe. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And so uh, uh, the links for the the book is uh, uh, below in the in the comment in the uh, the description, and so you can pick it up there, uh, ebook or uh, through physical form. Uh, there's no audible for for this one, so unfortunately you just have to use your eyes along with this one, or use us our <laughs> nice voices for that. Yeah. <laughs> and and so we we've read uh, actually I think both of us have read this book before on our own, and then together we've read one of the greater critiques on Ehrman's kind of where he has his foundationalism, which is the, um, uh, this is Kruger's book. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. he, he co-authors with Kruger. Um, yeah. uh, it's, it's a heresy of orthodoxy, which, go. uh, yeah. critiques what's known as the Bauer hypothesis. Right. So Bauer is this, uh, kind of, uh, thirties, uh, German theologian who comes up with this theory that, Early 20th that century. there's yeah. all these different Christian, uh, orthodoxes going around right. and there's no one set of orthodox and it's somehow kind of eventually like the, the strong guy survives. Right. right the winners take all yeah. so it morphs uh, gradually into what we believe mm -hmm. today and it really didn't start off that way there are all kinds right. of things about who Jesus was and what he who we, what he talked about and that sort of thing right. and so eventually we got to where we are mm -hmm. today right and I, it, we would definitely recommend heresy of orthodoxy I mean it just it, it takes uh, completely Completely out the Bauer hypothesis goes point by point and and pretty much uh, shows you a historical overview of what actually early Christianity is and uh, Kruger has even written kind of a not not necessarily a follow up but uh, for good contextualization uh, Christianity in the second century mm -hmm. um, which uh, uh, brings in the Gnostic period and uh, kind of uh, Christ, early Christianity having to respond to that and so um, those books are, are are good if you're looking for kind of other um, avenues to read if, if you're looking uh, for something post this. Uh, but this one's going to be mostly about the, uh, the critiquing the, the the theories and the presentations that that Bart Ehrman uh, has popularized. And so we'll 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 go into that um, some here. So uh, perhaps you've seen one of uh, Bart Ehrman's uh, debate performances uh, in the preface, uh, and he argued against a variety of opponents, or maybe you've uh, read one of his many best-selling books. And I, I mentioned Misquoting Jesus probably is the uh, most popular one. Um, he um, has worked with um, uh, Bruce Metzger, which is a, a huge uh, name in the, the textual criticism. Uh, and we'll get in, more into what textual criticism is for, for those who are like, oh, you're critiquing the Bible already? <laughs> uh, in a way, yes. But it's kind of like how one would say <coughs> apologetics. You know, we're not necessarily saying, oh, we're sorry for this. We're... we're we're coming up with a, a good, good critique uh, method, and sometimes he uh, he, uh, his, he the issues that he raises are important for the faith. Uh, and in this book, uh, they're going to be talking about a, uh, taking a closer look at the key arguments that uh, Ehrman keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. Because if you ever seen one of his debates, uh, you know if you know all the jokes, you're not you're not laughing uh, after the third debate because you've you've heard them all. He yeah. kind of has the same <laughs> argumentation. And so if you're looking for real answers to Ehrman's arguments from a biblical perspective, easily accessible and thoughtful presentation, this book is the book for you. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, uh, over the years, Ehrman has attacked the Bible from uh, what seems like every conceivable angle. Yeah. Right? yeah his efforts to discredit historic Christianity, uh, Ehrman has method, uh, uh, you know, 
systematically sought to dismantle virtually every major plank in the Christian religion. He's gone through everything. Yeah, like, even so far as 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 uh, coming up with a book about uh, you know passing down of, of oral stories. Uh, he's he has the theory that the Bible started out or the the New Testament started out as an oral transmission, and things get lost because you know you. You have a, an armed robbery and, you know, people see a woman in, with red hair and someone else sees a man with brown hair. You can't trust anybody. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. kind of like that that old, you know, uh, game that you played where you whisper and then you finally <laughs> right, get the to the Right, the game of telephone. That, that's, that's all right. Bible yeah. translation is, right? Yeah, <laughs> we've all heard that one before. Yeah, and so in his earlier writings, he, uh, you know, he argued that the root, the, the, the gospel was not based on authoritative commonly agreed upon teaching of Jesus and his disciples, yeah. but it only kind of, you know, gradually emerged as a result yeah. of various this power up, struggles, right, like in the, the first century. The Bauer century. hypothesis. Yeah, this yeah. is definitely the Bauer hypothesis, right, where, uh, you know, eventually, probably by the second century, or at least the third century, we have the book that we have today. Yeah. It didn't start off that way. Right. right? And, and uh, Bauer being of the belief that the, the Catholic Church was so early and had so much power at the early start of it, uh, where we see historically that's actually not the case, yeah. uh, which is one of the critiques in heresy of orthodoxy that they do a really good job of. Uh, so more more recently, from from when this book uh, was uh, uh, written, which is uh, 2014 is our copyright, uh, Armin has contended that many of the New Testament writings were fabricated and not written by the author to whom they are subscribed to. Mm -hmm. So Paul didn't write Paul, Peter didn't write Peter, John there was some other John perhaps, or at least John <laughs> right. didn't write John. Especially the Gospels. Yeah. I mean, it, th th there are times where he... I think uh, uh, with, within the confines of the classroom might admit to certain writings by Peter being of Peter. But, right, you know, right. what does that mean? Uh, and he's ex uh, expressed strong skepticism regarding the reliable handing down of the original text. And that's pretty much what he's got popularized for. Mm -hmm. And in addition, uh, Ehrman has also ventured in the area of biblical theology. Oh, weird. Yeah, That's a weird I'm place thinking. for a skeptic, uh, <laughs> alleging that there are numerous contradictions in the scripture. And we'll right. see uh, later on in this book how formal those those supposed contradictions have been to the, the, the formation of who Bart Ehrman is today. And perhaps one of his strongest uh, reasons for Ehrman's aversion to the Christian faith is revealed in this book, God's Problem. It's, it's God's Problem. <laughs> That's right. Where he states that God's <clears throat> inaction in the face of evil and human suffering is not only unexplainable, but inexcusable. Yeah, so this so, obviously is a problem of evil, and right. he's going to, you know, he's going to... You know, he deals with that and, yeah. and why that's a serious problem. That's why this book will deal with it. Yeah. 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 So in this book, we take up Erdman's argument on these issues. Uh, uh, you know, they kind of go one at a time, right? There are five chapters uh, in this one and plus some extra material there. So after a brief introduction, uh, you know, to his, who he is, his pilgrimage, where he came from, you know, from fundamentalist to skeptic. <laughs> right? Right. Then chapter one takes up the question, is God immoral because he allows suffering, right? So that will be the first chapter they'll look at. That's the first issue that they want us to see uh, regarding Erdman and what he talked about. And they're going to show that Christian thinkers have really given satisfactory answers to Erdman's questions in this area already, right? right. And uh, many of which they tell us uh, Erdman hasn't adequately explored in his book. Right. That is the answers to the questions that he raised, right? right? Yeah, <clears throat> which is a, a big critique of, of that this book goes through. Is there yeah. seems to be uh, answers or alleged down answers out there that, hey, you might not agree with, but write about it or yeah. let other people know about it or, uh, you know, uh, respond to them in some, some fashion. Yeah. Uh, a fascinating topic is, uh, that of uh, biblical theology, which, uh, we've, we've done here with our first book of, of uh, keeping faith in yeah. the age of reason yeah. with, um, uh, Jason Lyle. And so right. you can uh, check those out in the link below. And, uh, so in this topic of biblical theology, the interrelationships between various books of the Bible. And so this is chapter two is the Bible full of ir irresolvable contradictions. That's right. That's right. Um, it doesn't say one thing here and another thing there and they contradict right. each other, right? They're at odds. Right. Yeah. So it's here uh, that we also address one of the claims of Ehrman's newest book. The New Testament is made up of contradicting Christology. So the, there are there's a, a, a Christ version that John presents. There's one that Mark presents. And so Mark pre presents probably more the man Jesus. He wasn't fully fleshed out and superhuman. <laughs> John, high Christology stuff. And 
you know, uh, l- so look at the formation. So which one is true, yeah. and, you know, and they seem to be at odds right. with each other. And, and in fact, sort of he, he argued, uh, Armin <laughs> has also argued before, uh, or th- uh, th- through this new one, of, of different um, uh, ways that uh, Pontius Pilate is represented. Mm. And so uh, there's different Pontius Pilates out there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so in essence, we conclude that uh, Airman is far too quick to rush uh, to judgment and the reasonable explanations are reliable, are readily available where he cries, contradiction yeah yeah maybe right? not so, so much <laughs> so there are explanations available right and so he kind of rushes to judgment and really doesn't pursue these various mm-hmm. explanations at least that that is where they're what well, that's what they're going to su- suggest with their critique right, right? at least in his popular books <laughs> yeah. yeah chapter three then uh is uh, entitled are the biblical manuscripts corrupt mm-hmm. right and so this kind of goes they say to the heart of the matter right you know, is it true, as Erdman claims, for instance, that the process by which the biblical manuscripts were copied was riddled with errors right. so that we must lose confidence in the Bible that we have today? Can we trust our right. Bible, basically, yeah. is the, the question here, right? <clears throat> and, and so uh, um, uh, when, before I first heard of James White, I, I saw him in this interview where they were responding to uh, kind of, uh, it was called the, the Ehrman Project, something along those lines. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was saying that Bart Ehrman always used, there are 300,000 contradictions found in the New Testament alone. And James White was one that corrected him. And so now uh, Bart Ehrman uses James White's number of, there are over (laughs) 400,000 contradictions in the Bible. Yeah. But what does that mean in context? And actually, why is that kind of a good thing? Yeah. And how is that different from how we got the Quran? Mm. Very, very important. Very interesting stuff if you get into it. It got got me, it piqued my interest. Yeah. I went down rabbit holes for this one. Well, good rabbit holes. (laughs) (laughs) So what they're going to show in this this chapter about biblical manuscripts corruption is that Er Erdman's skeptical outlook has unduly flavored his assessment, right? Uh, so nice way of saying yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So they're going to, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, they say there's strong regions. We have strong reasons for confidence in the Bible that yeah. we have. And so we'll take a look at some of these in chapter three. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. Yeah. And then chapter four uh, mm-hmm. is the question of uh, were there many Christianities? And so uh, we can kind of talk a little bit about this in this chapter. They show uh, that the gospel found in the new Testament was based on the old Testament expectation of a Messiah fulfilled in Jesus and that this gospel was preached almost immediately after Jesus' death and resurrection. Right, so the real gospel is based on the expectation of the Messiah and how Jesus fulfilled that expectation. Mm-hmm. It's not one of these various things that we'll we'll take a look at when we get to this chapter yeah. that Erdman suggests was going on mm-hmm. in this situation. Yeah, so Gar- Gary Habermas uh, uh, talks a lot about this too in, in um, some of his uh, some of his writings about uh, trusting the historical reliability of the resurrection. So, mm. so some of those things might overlap, and uh, you might think, "Oh, uh, evidentialists!" Like, yeah, we're actually we're going to talk about uh, evidentialism and, and presuppositions. So we'll we'll cover that in a little bit here. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter five then asks the question: Are many biblical documents forged? So again, we're going to look at the scriptures, the documents, because there's some issues with regard to the documents that uh, Erdman, you know, raises. And so yeah. this takes up the matter of the authorship of the New Testament documents, right? Right. So in this chapter, we'll, uh, they're going to tell us that uh, we have good reason to believe that the professed authors are the real authors of the New Testament. The conclusion deals with uh, the very last chapter is the conclusion, and it's entitled Reasons to Believe. And uh, we'll see here that Erdman is driven by doubt that raises the bar of proof so high that, uh, you know, we can't, he can't be satisfied, right? right? In yeah. other words, in order to prove it to me, you got to be way up here, right? Yeah. An, an impossibility in I, terms I, of... I need five copies <laughs> of Mark signed by Mark in That's order right. for me to take, <laughs> which, you know, you're talking about 2,000-year-old historical documents and... We have to remember that there are other historical documents from around that same time, or at least before 1000 AD, yeah. or uh, whatever the new nomenclature is to denote time to take Christ out of things. <laughs> that's fine, uh, you know. Uh, uh, and so, to to have an expectation that you don't apply to anything else to believe things like, did Julius Caesar exist? Right. Well, you know, only if I have an attestation of of you know hypotheses and and <laughs> I, I need uh, six version of his books and I need them from four different regions right and right. Uh, only if uh, it, and they've his been, signature th- they've been willed <laughs> uh, through family lines for generations yeah, like, uh, yeah. all right yeah. maybe 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 that's a high standard that you don't ask of anything else right right 
Um, so you might be asking yourself, well, why not discuss the issues? Why discuss Bart Ehrman? Well, this book is not so much about him, but about his positions. Uh, he represents as best known in the public square. He's a spokesperson for skepticism in the Christian faith. I mean, he's been on uh, just so many TV shows and, and uh, you know, at the History Channel, once it does uh, any semblance of history of uh, the lost books of the Bible or <laughs> what did Jesus really say? And so yeah. it, it, you might find him on some of those. Uh, his books are sold everywhere. His texts are used on many campuses around the country what he writes people read and repeat in fact uh, we learned from that he even sells subscriptions to his blog wow. that's how prolific he can yeah, be yeah about that no, so no one subscribes to our blog for, for that <laughs> yeah. i mean if you want to we have patreon patreon.com slash cave of the cross go you know, for it go yeah. for it yeah so yeah. they they mentioned here that he's appeared on television numerous times on such programs as the daily show with john stewart the colbert report nbc's dateline inside edition and many others that's right, right? Yeah. so this is yeah Right. This guy. So he is he is prolific. He's popular. And, uh, you know, and people want to hear what he has to say and, and, and that sort of thing. And so, you know, let's take a look at what he has to say, because basically he's going to represent. Right. Right. Uh, a larger type of position. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. If, if you're a parent whose kid isn't uh, is about ready to go into college, uh, it's probably more than likely, uh, depending on where they go or what what uh, what. Uh, field of study, uh, they might encounter this person, or I think uh, more people tend to interact with his work on the collegiate level, and then probably in the, the early uh, teenage uh, uh, 20s years when they're um, kind of outside the, the, the home and, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that the faith that the, 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 the faith that they, they've embraced for uh, however long with, with you is, is uh, uh, really theirs, and so they might run into this. They might run into, uh-oh, that seems like a problem. Well, hey, Look at that. Apologetics. Yeah. We can present answers. That. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. so hopefully this has convinced you kind of to, uh, to, um, view the, the benefit of, of looking at Burm because of his popularity and, and the topics that he covers pretty much, uh, uh, what I think most people go to now for, uh, a, well, the scholars agree such and such. About, right. About right. Yeah. 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 That's, so he supposedly represents the scholar. So the so the the contents of the book is uh, you know there's a preface that, that we've kind of worked our way through here. The introduction we'll look at that in just a, in, in next uh, where they say from fundamentalist to skeptic they're going to give us like a preview of who he is and 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 uh, you know why he believes what he believes mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Chapter one then is God is God immoral because he allows suffering. Chapter two is the uh, the Bible is full of irresolvable contradictions. Chapter 3, are the biblical manuscripts corrupt? Chapter 4, were, were there many Christianities? Chapter 5, then, are many um, New Testament documents uh, forged? And then finally, the conclusion is the reasons to believe. So let me just kind of go through how the book is, is mm -hmm. laid out yeah. here, right? So what you do, so as you, so when you get to each chapter, let's say chapter one, what you find, the chapter title then is the uh, the question that he asks in that particular, uh, you know, what he wants to deal with in that particular chapter. So chapter one is, is God immoral because he allows uh, suffering? So that's the chapter title. And then the way the chapter is laid out is he gives us a, a kind of a, a, a list of the claims that are addressed. And these are usually a one sentence kind of list. Yeah, a right? summary. Yeah. yeah, a summary of each of the claims that they're going to deal with in the chapter. So it's really laid out, you know, really organized and... and um, Prepares it for what the contents can exactly, be. Exactly, yeah. right? And so, and then we get a summary of the chapter and then each claim that they listed, they address it, Right. They give us a conclusion. And then each chapter ends with uh, discussion questions, mm -hmm. right, to kind of make sure that you understood exactly where they're coming from and, uh, and, uh, and that you can use maybe even as a, as a guide in a group, something like mm -hmm. that, right? Yeah. yeah, so this is a, a good book for, for um, church groups to go through, um, uh, youth groups. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, um, it deals with uh, interesting and scholarly topics, but it's not... So, you know, it, it's, it's like I said, they, they broke these books down into three different college and high school level ones. But, um, you know, if, if you're kind of familiar with um, the subject and 
hey, look, you have us. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, use our stuff to to, to supplement the, the material. So, so, so last chapter is kind of a general conclusion. Yeah. you know the reasons to believe, and then there is a glossary of terms. Right? Always so important have, to have. Yeah, yeah, and then finally, and this is what I really like because I believe that if you really understand what you're talking about, you should be able to summarize it in a page or two, right? And so that's what he does in the, mm. the very last portion of the book. He gives quick uh, question and answer guide. So each of the questions that he deals with in each of the chapters, he kind of summarizes the whole yeah. chapter in about a page or so, which is, you know, it's kind of the, you know, the cliff note version <laughs> right. of the book. Turn to the back of the book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like your math book. You yeah. turn to the back, make sure you have the answer right, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really laid out. It's really well organized. Yeah, in terms of how the very much so. Yeah.